we sitting here and we are on set of All BS Podcast. Y'all know I'm your boy LJ Brown. And we got our special guest with us today, Miss Nikki Peacock. What's hey, going hey, on? hey, you guys, what's happening? Appreciate you joining, kicking it with yes, us. Yes, I appreciate you for having you me. You already been questioning me. I feel like you're doing the, the interview. Right, because I just feel like it's been so long since yeah, we had yeah, a chance yeah. to actually talk yeah, yeah, because yeah. when we see each other in passing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, man, I just want to see mm-hmm. like how you feel about mm-hmm. the transition because it's so mm-hmm. much mm-hmm. happening and you always keep your cool. Mm-hmm. I tell everybody, you got the best poker face. I mean, I, you know what? That's the best way to look at it. And I ain't never really thought about it like that, but I do. I think I do. Um, before you jump in, I know you probably got a bunch of questions that you probably want to ask me, but tell us a little bit about what you got going on. Like you said, it's been a little while. We've just been in passion with whatever, but tell everybody what you got going on and oh. uh, what, what you do here <laughs> at the Mount. I know this not, we not the Mount, but it's, you know, we all BS right now, but tell everybody like what you, what you, and let me say this, all BS, cause you know, people be, you know. With BS, they be kind of like, what's BS? Right, what do B and the what S is, stand for? Because you know, ex- <laughs> when you said, I was like, S. okay, what do the B and the S stand so, for when you put it together? So listen, for those of y'all, it's your first time tuning in, all BS is all Bible study. Oh, <laughs> that was- <laughs> You like that? It is, because that's not what I was saying. See? <laughs> Get your minds right, people. Clearly. Get your minds right. Clearly. It's I all, was like, it's, listen, it's all BS. It's all BS. It's all I like BS. it. It's, it's all, all Bible it's study. All Bible I study. like That's it. what we do here. I tell everybody, look, yeah. everything we do, everything we talk about, it's who we are, yeah. right? We believers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We believers. So everything we do, everything what we talk about, it's always Jesus centered, it's always biblically based. You know, that's just, that's how we live our lives. You know, so on set here, you know, it's it's all BS. So it's it's all Bible study. You know, and and it's you know, and I like BS because to your same point, it's edgy. It is. It's it edgy, is. and that's what this show is about. Like we like to go all the way in. We don't like to just stay surface level. We like to you know get all the way uh, into the BS. Yeah, I like it. Right? I like it because it works on so many levels. It does. I, just, I like it because it makes you. If you hear, you can be like, wait a minute, let me Google this and make sure. Yeah, I like it. So what you got going on? Well, we up here on on, yeah. on all BS podcasts. They tell us like what you what you got going on, what you've been doing, and. A little bit about yourself. Man, it's so it's that's such a broad topic. Mm-hmm. So like let me just start. Well, first of all, Nikki Peacock and mm-hmm. I just I try to serve as much as I possibly can here. I love the mount. Mm-hmm. And so I don't try to I love hosting. Most mm-hmm. time you see me, I'm hosting mm-hmm. like the pre-show, mm-hmm. and that's what I do. I love hosting. Amazing job, too. Thank you. It's mm-hmm. one of my favorite things to do. But I'm most time it's wherever you need me to do anything. Mm-hmm. I'm the type of person when I come to church, it don't matter. Whatever you need right. me to help out with, I'm gonna try to right. help out. Um, what I do for a living, I am a hairstylist. I own, well, the God owns the Peacock Experience. Okay. And I, I like that. am the beautiful stylist that runs and operates the Peacock Experience here in Chesapeake, Virginia. Um, I'm a makeup artist. I mean, I do all kinds of stuff. You do everything. Yeah, I do everything. But most importantly, I am a just a soldier for God. Like, I'm uh-huh. here for God. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm here just to spread God's word. Mm-hmm. And not necessarily, I'm not here to preach or anything, mm-hmm. but I, I, try, say, try what to that people, I try to give people practical advice mm-hmm. in a way you can digest it. I feel like it's chicken nuggets. Because okay. chicken nuggets can be good any time of the day. True. And I feel like if I have a, a good nugget that I want to give you, I'm going to share it with you. And if it's good enough, you're going to keep it. You're going to eat it. You're going to digest it. And then you're going to give it to somebody else. And that's what wisdom is, is having knowledge and sharing it with other people. I like it. I like and it. so for me, when I mean like I'm a soldier for God, mm-hmm. it means I don't play about God. Mm-hmm. So anything I do is going to be all God-based. Right. So I, I'm going to tell you out of love and respect, mm-hmm. but understand it's outlining God. Mm-hmm. So you, so you say you're a soldier, a soldier for God. So you, so you out here holy. I am. So you out here holy, I, and I say that okay. because see, see, and I say that because we talked about one time being. I can't remember. It was a lesson that we talked about, but I, I read the definition of holy. So what's the definition before I answer it? Right. So the definition of holy just simply means it's somebody that's being dedicated to God or like a religious group. Yes. Right. So when when you saying that you a soldier, you out here like it's like chicken nuggets, you know, I'm gonna drop nuggets. Every time a nugget come to me, I'm just gonna drop it. You might jump on social media, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, drop a nugget, right? To me, you holy. Like what you doing is you're dedicating, you have dedicated your life to doing just that. If God give me something, I'm gonna drop it on y'all. If God asks me to serve over here, I'm gonna serve over there, Absolutely. I'm gonna go over there. Holy just simply mean that I'm just dedicated. You're doing whatever it is God got me doing. Holy is not, 
having a little thing on your head. Can't run the Bible and, and be carrying like, the Bible and how your dress come all the way down to your ankles and all that. That's not that's a it could be a form of holy. Right. But that's not all what holy is. Holy just simply means I'm just dedicated to rocking with God every day. And that's how I do. I'm just dedicated to rocking with God. When I get up in the morning, I thank God for waking me up. And then I thank him for everybody that he wakes up in the morning. Yeah. Because it's not just about me. Mm -hmm. It's everybody working together to create the bigger picture for mm -hmm. God. So if I could just be mindful of what God puts in my hand and, long, and make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do with the stuff that I got, right. then I'm cool. Right. And that's just how I'm living. Me too. Me too. Yeah. I think that I keep telling everybody, man, everybody that's like our generation, you know, type, you know, like if you are right now just simply not afraid to just share about God, you are who he's trying to use right now. Yeah. It's like God want them people that's not, you know, um, I ain't even going to say that's who he want right now. That's who God has always wanted. Yeah. It's just not who man has always wanted to use. There you go. God has always wanted to use the people who don't look like, you know, whatever, this, that, or the th I mean, when you think about it, again, I always go back to the disciples. I find it interesting. Yes. The people that he God or Jesus chose to use. You know, it's just, it's always interesting to me. He never went, he didn't go and grab anybody out the temple. He didn't grab anybody out the synagogue. Anybody that knew how to pray already. And he didn't grab any of those people. No. He didn't have any, grab anybody that had the look. You know, because again, what is even the look? Exactly. What is What is that? We've made a look, but I don't know if it was a look in them days. And if it was, he didn't go for that. He went over there with Peter and then Peter and then was on the boat. I'm Working. sure Peter then had, then had a suit and, you know, dress shoes on while he was on the boat. You see what I'm saying? And so I feel like he went and grabbed those people and then taught them how to do what he needed them to do. And the capacity they were supposed to do it in. So I feel like he has always just wanted not people who knew how to do the form and fashion, but he's always wanted to use people that just, just don't mind sharing mm -hmm. and however you need to share it. Yeah. Just be willing, like how you say it, when God drop a nugget on you, you just willing to just open your phone up and share that nugget that God gave you. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It reminds me of a, a sermon you preached. Mm -hmm. You said something about the donkey and mm -hmm. tying mm -hmm. the donkey Yes, 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 yes. And yes, you yes, was yes, like, yeah. sometimes you yeah. got to be the donkey and sometimes donkey. you yeah. just got to be That's there. It. And people fail to realize they want to be everybody else. Yes. But if you stay in position and yeah. wait on God's time, that donkey has significance of Absolutely. the story. Absolutely. And a lot of people in the Bible don't get any mention, but yeah. everybody reminds that donkey. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the point of that story was God had sent the guy into the town, right? Mm -hmm. And just told him it's going to be a donkey there. When you see the donkey, just go get the donkey and bring him. He don't know nothing. He don't know who the donkey belonged to. He don't know <laughs> if God had already talked to whoever the donkey belonged to, if they're going to come in the door. And that's why he said, the dude was like, well, so what if somebody say something? He was like, if somebody say something, you just tell them I need it. Come on So here. the point is, when you're doing what you're doing, you may not know necessarily the reason why you're doing it. You just know God needs you to do it, right? And so it's like, because he didn't give him no reason. He said, well, what if somebody come out? He said, just tell them I need it. So you ain't, might not necessarily always know. And the point of that lesson was, Bro, I'm just untying my donkey. Like, I don't need, I don't know why. You trying to ask me why I'm doing this, why I'm doing that, why I look like this, why I don't talk like this, why I get up like this, why I jump on social media and share the nuggets that you share. You ain't no minister. Why you sharing? Who you think you are? Why you know how people do? Oh, yeah. And all right, look, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just getting the donkey. Exactly. I don't exactly. know. Exactly. I'm just getting no, the I just donkey. need the donkey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't know. And like, exactly. that's just where we got to live sometimes. Like, sometimes I'm just living, I ain't even gonna say sometimes. Most of the time, we're all just living in a season of we. I'm just bringing the donkey. I don't know like what the donkey might be used for. I don't know why he got me used. Like I'm just on a assignment. I'm just getting yeah. the donkey. And so many people want the answers. Why? Where the donkey at? What yeah. he look like? What? Yeah. Who gonna stand there? Yeah. What street? What time? And God is not of God. It's gonna give you all of that. Just He's going just saying, in. Do you trust me there. enough? I'm just telling you to go just get go. the donkey. Do you trust me? And it's that thing. And, and people don't understand it. That's that faith without work is dead. That's just trust on the Lord beyond your own understanding. Because can you imagine being the one and God just saying, "Hey, go get the donkey," and you like God, but. 
Do you trust me? Go get the donkey. And you're like, oh, you got to get up. You got to psych yourself. That's self-motivation. You got to get up like, okay, God. All right, nigga, God said, go get the donkey. It's we faith. don't know, but. It's faith. Listen. I go get we, the donkey. We say a lot in church. Mm -hmm. We say a lot. We shout it. We chant it. <laughs> we repeat it. We pull it down. <laughs> we we but, call it out. But <laughs> unless you believe it. Yes. I don't care how many times you turn around in a circle. I don't care how many times. Unless you believe it, you can't even. Not only will you not receive anything, like you can't even, you can't even put anything into application. Because again, you won't even go if you don't have the faith enough to believe Absolutely. that the donkey gonna be there, like he said. But before faith, you gotta get a relationship with God so that you can hear His voice, so that you know how to trust Him. Because you can have all the faith it. in the world, but if you ain't spending time with God, if you ain't talking to God, and you don't know His voice, you don't know who telling you to go get the donkey. You gotta believe it. And if He told you, I'm gonna pass that, Nikki. If He told you Keep, to get the listen, donkey. Listen, but we have, how many times though have you known that God told you something and you still scared? Oh, you still ain't do it. So that's my and point. then you see somebody else go get you the donkey. You gotta believe. And then you see somebody else get the donkey. And, and you're then like, you're mad. God, what happened? God, I told you to get the donkey they four believed. times. And they believe me. They I don't have to tell them once. That's it. They just believe. Yeah. They just believe. Yeah. And so. we were talking about parent. We were just talking about mm -hmm. parenting mm -hmm. earlier. And me and my mom, my spiritual mom, we, me and my mom, we were mm -hmm. talking. And she was like, we were just talking about kids, because it's a lot of us, it's mm -hmm. seven mm -hmm. of us. And she was like, an obedient child can get so much more from yes, their parents yes. than an unruly child. Yeah. And I apply that to God. If we are just obedient mm -hmm. and we patient and mm -hmm. we trust God and we mm -hmm. seek him, mm -hmm. it's so much easier to have a relationship with him. Because he's more inclined to talk to you. Absolutely. He going to drop nuggets on you. He going to do what he got to do. And stuff just going to start falling into place because you are actively seeking him, actively being obedient, actively trusting. And so when that stuff gets shaky, you're going to be like, I don't know, but I got to try because I don't want to, what's the cost of not trying? Well, obedience, again, if you look at it in the sense of a parent and a child, like obedience, if your child is obedient, right, mm -hmm. what you going to not do for them? I so that's the point. It's like <laughs> yeah. if if you obedient, then you almost forcing God to have to produce for you. Like you obedient. God been good. Like why wouldn't you do it for me? I've been good. There you go. But that's also why the scripture says, most common scripture, obedience is better than sacrifice. It, and so it is. that's what he wants from us. It is. But most times, most times when it's time for us to be obedient, we rather sacrifice. But that's why the Bible say obedience is better than sacrifice. Because if you're obedient, everything else, everything falls on the obedience. Everything. If you're obedient, then you will sacrifice when he asks you to sacrifice. Absolutely. If you're obedient, then you will serve when he asks you to serve. Absolutely. If you're obedient, then, like everything falls into place. Like everything falls in line behind obedience. That's why he says it's, it's better than sacrifice. He don't want you just coming here and give it all away either. Yeah. No, uh. I, I, now I might ask you to do that. Yeah. But that's also part of being obedient. That's not necessarily just sacrificing. Mm -hmm. You're being obedient. Yeah. And you're being a good steward over what I've given you to be obedient with. Yes. So, I mean, I agree 100%. Um, obedience is... Obedience is the key to, it's like, if you're obedient, you'll follow the biblical principles. If you're obedient, like, if yeah. you're obedient, it's it's not just, being obedient is not even just, like, for you to fall in line. Right. Obedience help you to become more disciplined. Yes. Obedience, so, like, obedience is going to help you to go further down the road because it's, it's not meant for you to, like, fall in line. Obedience is meant for you to help progress. You're going to yeah. be disciplined, which means you're going to be uh, a better steward with your finances and your resources and, your you know, in your relationships. Exactly. Yeah. And I tell people this all the time, um, just about relationships, because I'm single. And I tell people, when you get your relationship right with God, mm -hmm. everything else that has relationship or ship falls right into place. It's like putting... Like I say, almost like waves. If you drop a, mm -hmm. a rock in the ocean mm -hmm. and it creates the waves, yeah. if that one line is shaky, mm -hmm. all your other lines gonna be yeah. shaky. So if your relationship with God is shaky, Everything all else. your other yeah. ships are going Absolutely. to be shaky. Yeah. And so for me, I had to dial all the way back. And I was like, God, let me start from the basic mm -hmm. relationship. Let me go back to you. Mm -hmm. That way, if my relationship was good with you, you're going to make sure everything else, everything else is going to be steady. So Absolutely. that's what I try to do. And as being like a person for me, being 
obedient and disciplined, I wear that as a badge of honor. Mm-hmm. I take it as a as a as a job, as mm-hmm. a as something that I live for, I owe it to God mm. that much mm. to get up and be the best mm. person I can be for yeah. him, for his grace. I mean, he Jesus died for yeah, me so yeah, that I could be yeah, here. Yeah. That's the least I could do yeah. is, is be who you called me to be That's respectfully. It. That's it. That's it. And the you that God called is not perfect. Oh, my God. You guys... <laughs> You know, and it will never be perfect. So, so because here's what I don't like. You know, I don't like with people, anybody that's even watching this, and we are here. We talking about like, yeah, I strive every day to try to you know live and do. We do, but it don't mean that you're perfect. It don't mean that you get everything right all the time. It just means that when I do get it wrong, God can tap me on my shoulder, and be like, "Hey, tighten up," and Come then we try here. to get it back tomorrow. Absolutely, absolutely. That's the best part. When you get it wrong, you're obedient enough, disciplined enough, receptive enough, mm-hmm. caring enough that when God taps you mm-hmm. on your shoulder mm-hmm. or sends somebody mm-hmm. to check you, mm-hmm. you can say, you know what? You're right. You're right. You're right. And you could take it and use it, make it as wisdom. It'll make you better. Yeah. And if- I guarantee you God will bring it back and you're going to have to use it again. Yes. If you are tr- if you are truly trying to live right, yeah. that's what living right is. Living right is not... That I get it right all the time. If I'm trying to live right, it just simply means that if I do or when I do, because you will, yeah. when you do, you know what I'm saying, veer off a little teeny bit, it just means you you can be corrected and get back on, you know, get back on track. That's yeah. what it means. It don't mean that you literally get it right all the time. It yeah. just means that if I do get it wrong, then he gonna say something, we get it back. It's just again, it's back to the parent child. Yeah, I'm about to say it's your back mom to and the dad don't child. throw you away just because you make a mistake. Every time you get something wrong, they don't be like, "We're done. We're not even related." They be like, <laughs> "Okay, you did wrong. Here's where you messed up. Let me try to better. fix it." Absolutely. And a lot of times, um, I tell a lot of because I do hear, so I get a lot of young adults mm-hmm. in my church mm-hmm. in my chair. And well, your chair can be your church too. <laughs> it is. Mm-hmm. It is like I, for me and my salon, anybody who comes in my salon, God creates the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. I tell God it's His place of business. Mm-hmm. Whatever His people need, they gonna mm-hmm. get it by way of me. However mm-hmm. He sees mm-hmm. fit. We have church in there. We cry mm-hmm. in there. We mm-hmm. praise God in there. We do. Mm-hmm. We chill. Mm-hmm. The young girls that come in there, or the younger kids that come in there, and they have issues with their parents. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, they're not trying to. They're not trying to let you be who you are. Right. Not who you are. They're trying to. Keep you from making the same right, mistakes. Right, right. Like you think you know everything, but you don't. Right. Absolutely. And just like they feel like it's hard, but it's just love. Mm-hmm. And just like when we go through stuff with God, we're like, God not listening. Or God, not, He's just trying to get you to depend on Him more. We don't like tough love. <sighs> Listen, we don't, we don't, we don't really do good with tough love. And my mom wouldn't do it good for tough love. Oh man, she'll let you go through. Oh yeah, she'll let you oh, go through, yeah. and, and she watching you and paying attention even when you don't even think she is. But man, she'll let you go through. Mm-hmm. She'll let you feel like you, 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 you know. I don't know what you're gonna do. Yeah, my mom was good for for um giving us tough love, but we don't like tough love. And God give you tough love too. God, God will absolutely give you give tough you love, and tough I think love. it's needed. I, I mean, think listen, it's needed. I tell you, the Bible tell you you're gonna go through some stuff. So, yeah. so whether we want to even, and I don't want to ice a jeep. So whether we want to say that that's the tough love or not, the bottom line is he let you know you're gonna have to go through. Yeah, I'm not even gonna be able to keep you from not having to go through anything. Yeah, but at the end of the day, what? what but I'm gonna story? be here with you. I'm gonna be. I'm, the Bible says I will never leave you for saying. But I'm gonna be here yeah, with you. Though. And the best part about God <laughs> is that He deemed every day a good day when He created it. Yeah, yeah, and. Yeah, but yeah, like what I was talking about, like parents. So mm-hmm. yeah, my mom, mm-hmm. tough love. Mm-hmm. Watch you go through it. Mm-hmm. And I read something somewhere on the internet, and it said that you you wonder why God is quiet, and they say teachers are quiet during the, the exam, yes. on during the test. Yes. Yes. So all the time that God is talking to you and telling you to do stuff, and da 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 da, He's telling you all that information because there's going to be a time when He's going to say, it. "I got to be quiet because I got to see that you know that you're capable of handling this, that you can do what I know you can do." So or what I, I be told quiet. you, or what I told you, same to thing do. like you just talking about with the teacher. Now I gave y'all the study guide, <laughs> and we went over it. <laughs> I gave you the answers. We went over it last week. We went over it Friday. <laughs> And then, you know what I'm saying, I gave you all weekend, and then Monday morning came in here, we ran over it again before we took the test. Now it's time to take the test. Mm-hmm. Can't ask questions during the test. You can't ask questions during the test. Okay. You got to know it. You got to have it in you. You got to be prepared. 
but they never leave you. They don't ever let you not be prepared. That's the best part about God. He prepares you. God prepares you for everything. everything. And whether you're listening and paying attention is up to you. Mm -hmm. Because God, they think, people think, people be like, hi, I know God talking to me. You think it's going to be like, boom, mm -hmm. and then God, mm -hmm. it ain't going to mm -hmm. be like that. Mm -hmm. For some people, it is. Mm -hmm. They be like, oh, I heard them clear yeah, as yeah, day. Yeah, definitely. For me, I got to sit quietly. But that's what I'm going to say. You got to listen, though. I have to be like, and I had to get into a point where I conditioned myself to mm -hmm. sit in that time mm -hmm. and just be like, all right, God. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to switch up the I'm gonna, same vein, but I'm going to switch it up a little tiny. Okay. I want you to answer honestly. Okay. All right. Talking about listening, God speaking. Can you hear? You said that you need to sit down, be still, quiet. Y'all, you know me. I'm never. I've never been big as far as like outward, outwardly expression, especially like in church. Mm -hmm. Right. I ain't. I ain't the one to yeah, do you, all the. <laughs> you can, you can take a front. I don't want to call it <laughs> answers and stuff. You know, it's it's, right. it's it's you know it's it's real, but I'm just that's not how me and God do. Right. Right. My point to it is always, or how God, I feel like how God had gave it to me was, same thing. When you were in school and the teacher was talking or trying to teach, and you ever been in class, and, you know, if you was in class with me, I know you was in a class like this. But <laughs> if you have you ever been in class and the class was like like rowdy, run bunch, just won't listening, talking, whatever, and in our class, when it was like that, the teacher would just sit sit up there and go just like this. I continue when y'all finish, whenever y'all ready. So, the point is, it's impossible for you to listen, learn, retain information if you are talking while the teacher talking. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go back to church. Mm -hmm. The preacher up there preaching. He talking good. He saying, talking about whatever he talking about. But we, <laughs> we the we class. Oh, yes, yes, God. We, we the class. Yes. <laughs> we just as rambunctious. We, just, we talking to the neighbor. You slapping for you. Yes. You running. You taking something. You shouting. Yes. You may even be all the way in the spirit. You, you, you isn't. I mean, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, it's like okay. Fast forward after church, you at dinner, and that's why we can. That's why we can talk about how good of a time we had in church. Cause we did. We yeah. had a great time. We had a great time. We had fun. We enjoyed ourselves. We had, I mean, we had a time. Same way I had fun in, in school. I ain't learned squat, but I had fun. I went every day. <laughs> Me too. I had a good time in I class. I didn't learn nothing. I had a good time in class. What did the teacher say? <laughs> I always got taught too much Tell me that's not how we do in church. Yeah. yeah. You get home and man, Don't we had anything. a good time mm -hmm. in church today. Kendra and were, oh my goodness. We, mm, we did. We had a good time. What did he talk about? It take you like five minutes. You really got to think. You really yeah. got to be like, oh, man, he said. And then if you think long enough, you'll come up with the title. And maybe one point. And maybe a point. But you could tell anybody who ran around, who got caught in the Holy Spirit. my goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did we have a time? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's I, I, would, I would love to do a poll, but I'm almost willing to bet. It's all BS. Okay. It's obvious. It's obvious. <laughs> I'm almost willing to bet the best note takers in church mm -hmm. are not your high emotional partners. I agree. Because it's hard to take notes when you ain't even sitting down in your seat. Yeah. I'm I'm willing to bet your the you'll get the most volume of note takers. Your note takers. And I ain't saying they don't praise God, but your note taker going, you, they say something good, they going. Go ahead. Be right there. Yep. I'm with you. Yeah. Or they might even be in worship for a little bit. Mm, man. They might be in there. They, they ain't veering too far. They ain't. Because I got to get these notes. I'm listening. God is downloading yeah. to me. He's yeah, talking yeah, yeah. to me. He talking to me. Yeah. I can't, I like he downloaded, I gotta, I gotta get that. Yeah. 
And what we'll fool ourselves into thinking, like I was in class. I, I, I remember, she said, we got a test on Thursday. Uh, on Yeah, I remember that. We got a test Thursday. I ain't wrote nothing down. You ain't wrote it down. Mm -hmm. And then come, here come Thursday morning, we got a test today. Mm -hmm. Well, she, she told y'all we had a test, but you thought you was going to be able to remember it. Yeah. You thought while you was talking to us behind <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. So you weren't really paying attention. You ain't took no notes. And then the next group meeting come up, you can be talking about how do I know when I hear from God? Yeah, exactly. Or how I know if I missed it. Or I think I'm trying to transition. Or how I know he's for me. Yeah. So I think now, that's fine line. So I ain't saying nothing is... You know, I enjoy, you know, like. Yeah. The out loud worshipers is what I call them. And let's, and let's get it, yeah. right? Like, that's, it is a real thing. It's it just, is. For me, it's just, you know, when, when God hit me like that, he don't, he, he don't make me like, yeah. Yeah. Like, now, if I go to the game, see, the people always use it. Now, you at the game, you'd yeah. be, yeah, because that's what LeBron made me yeah. do. LeBron don't, he make, yeah, boy. Yeah. God don't make me do that, though. Nah. God made me cry. See, and I was about to say that. And that's what LeBron don't do. Yeah. LeBron ain't never made me shed no tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he might make me pump a fish, but he, don't, he ain't never made me just, yeah. man, you know what? Thank you. Yeah. And see, for me, I'm more of an intimate, intimate worshiper. Yeah. So for me, coming to church for me, I enjoy, I didn't grow up in church. Mm -hmm. Um, So like, People used to talk about Sunday Bible school and staying on church mm -hmm. all day. I don't know nothing about that. Nah. Oh, man, you missed out. Yeah, listen. We might got to take you back. No, we, I went to you Bible study. Like, I, can, I can you're remember not a few, real, You're a not a real church. Nah. You're not a real. If you didn't do, <laughs> no. do none of that, you got to go back to class. I didn't have to class. stand up in line and rehearse no Jesus well. I didn't have to do no, <laughs> okay. no plays. Like, we, we went to Sunday school every now and again. Mm. So, for me... I thought that in order to be in the presence of the Lord, mm -hmm. in order to get all that, you had to mm -hmm. be right, right, like right. that. So when I first came to church, right. I was like, I ain't going to ever get blessed because right, right, this right, is not right, me. Right. First of all, I'm not trying to mess my eyebrows right, up, right. and I'm not trying to mess my lashes up. It took me a long time to get right. ready. Right. But as I've matured in my spirit, I'm okay with knowing for me, mm -hmm. I'm intimate. Mm -hmm. I can, I, you get me in a club, I'm out. I'm right. out, exactly. out, out, out. Exactly. But for me and God, because I've done that so much for everybody right. else, for me and God, right. when I'm getting it, oh, I need to be sitting. Absolutely. I need to be poised. Me and God need to be here. And even a lot of times when they want me to pray on stage, mm -hmm. I'm very much uncomfortable mm -hmm. because I pray in the chair. I pray right. sitting down. Right. Right. When right. I'm getting my best moments with right. God, I'm quiet. Right. I'm still. And I'm just here. And he make me cry. Me he make me laugh. Me he holds me. He caresses me. Have you ever had a hug from that's, God? But that's what I was going to say. I say that in church. I feel like church for me. Like when I feel God, that's what I feel like. I talk, like I feel like God's presence is a warm embrace. Yes, like it is. That's how I feel. I could just sit there and I'm just to myself. It's just me and him. That's why the tears would be coming down. He's just hugging me. Yes, yes. He's just hugging me. Yes. That's to me what it is. It's it's God's warm embrace. Yes. It's just His warm Th embrace. And that's what it. And that is the best yeah. analogy yeah. I can explain when I talk about it. When just the feel and just mm -hmm. the pure sensation mm -hmm. from in, and it's a warm feel mm -hmm. from inside. Yeah. 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 And I just and I just how I know it's gonna be okay. That's it. And so even when I do get it wrong, because I get it wrong, yeah, we all get it I just wrong. be like, man, you know what? It is what it is. Let's let's pick it up. That's let's it. do better tomorrow. Let's let's do better tomorrow. Let's do better. Let's tomorrow. do better tomorrow. That's it. So look, I ask you a few questions. You got anything for me? Like what you, what you, what you, you got something you want to ask? Yes, you, 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 you know. You, you threw out early that I got a, a real good poker face. So you like, do. Oh, what, and that's what? what, and you know, it's so crazy because um, you and I, we're not that far away mm -hmm, from age. Mm -hmm. And people ask me all the time, because when I when they come in my salon, they be like, man, I don't know, you know, what's going on in Chesapeake, mm -hmm. the shift, like what you think, mm -hmm. da 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 Bishop and LJ, da, da, mm -hmm. what you think? And I'd be like, man, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited because you can't shake LJ. Mm -hmm. You can't shake him. Mm -hmm. It don't matter what goes on, you, you can't it. shake him. I ain't gonna let you see it. <laughs> yeah, he got a good poker face. And I was like, it doesn't matter what's going on, he gonna be exactly who God mm -hmm. called him to be. And that's what we need. That's what young people need to see, these new millenniums. We need, they need to see that if God made you that way and he approved, anointed, and appointed you, it doesn't matter what everybody else says. Yeah. 
And the fact that it's time, I'm waiting. I'm I'm excited to see Bishop transition to be like Air Apostle. Or when he could just be Grandpa Bishop. Right. Or when somebody can just walk up to right. him and say, hey, Mr. Kim, <laughs> Grandpa how you Bishop. doing? <laughs> Grandpa Grand, Bishop. Grandpa Bishop. You like that Bishop. Yeah, Grandpa Bishop. Grandpa Bishop. <laughs> yeah. I'm just excited for him because to see, like, I've only been here since like 2011. Mm -hmm. But to see how consistent he's been since then, mm -hmm. it's like, he deserve it. Oh, he deserves something different. Definitely. So I'm just excited. So how is that for you? I know because it's got to be tough shoes to fill. And because mm -hmm. that's your dad, mm -hmm. your mom, mm -hmm. and your sister, and mm -hmm. your wife, all in ministry. Mm -hmm. So that's got to be tough for you because mm -hmm. you hand, that's a lot of baggage to carry. Yeah. yeah. And especially the, like the mount, the people, the yeah. saints, the yeah. people that have been here longer than me, mm -hmm. older than you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep going, keep going. I mean, I'm, and then you're a dad, like you're a new uncle. It's, it's so much. How do you keep it together to just be like, you know what, y'all? It is like this is all I got for y'all. Right. I mean, I ain't going to say I know how, but to your point, it, that's, it's really just my makeup. I think God just, he gave me the demeanor that I need for this. Okay. Right. It's really just my make I've I have always been like that. Always been nonchalant. Always seem like <laughs> I didn't care about stuff. I do care. Okay. I do care. I care a whole if you talk to me long enough, you know something like I get passionate about something, I get to going. So I do care. I just don't you know what I mean? I don't really uh, you know I ain't gonna get on ten about it all the time. Okay, you know real what quick, what's your excited face? Go. I don't have an excited face. Uh, clearly <laughs> I was getting ready to try to make up some. And you know, you remind me of, you ever seen Ice Cube in the interview? Yes. And how just throw it. he yeah. is just like, yeah. and you yeah. be like, Ice Cube, laugh. He be like, yeah. ain't nothing funny. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, so that's me. But I've always been nonchalant um, like that. Um, I think, though, because it's always, like, I don't have no, like, I can't, I can't fake something. Okay. Right? Like, I can't, like, I can't pretend and do like how Bishop do. Like I can't even fake it. I can't like play and like do what he do or um preach how he preach. Like I can't I can't fake shout. Right. Like I don't have a fake shout. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't I can't yeah. do it. So I think it helps me because I can't fake it. Mm. See what I'm saying? Where it's like a lot of people be like, man, I like what you're doing, man, because you ain't you ain't got up there and tried to you know, be nobody else, like you, you stage you. Uh -huh. And the whole time it's like, I can't get up here and try to like, now I could, and it's gonna be terrible. Mm -hmm. Cause I can't, I don't have that, I can't, like I said, I can't fake a shout, I can't fake like I know how to sing, I can't, you know what I mean? So I, I don't have any choice but to be who I am. Yeah. Like I gotta just give it up. And I wouldn't do it no other way anyway. That's just my personality. I'm gonna get to you how I'm gonna get to you. If you don't like it, then, we got to figure out how to, yeah. cause that's just how 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 I've always been. But what's helping me in this season, though, and I've been saying it over and over and over and over and over again, is just by realizing that the characters in the Bible, people, they was not perfect. No, the people in the Bible, they had issues. They was going through stuff. They was dealing with stuff. They all sinned. And God still used yep. them. God still, God still used them. So like that's that's what yeah. that's what be carrying me through. Cause it's like, like you know, people people always use the saying, "God know my heart." Mm -hmm. Oh, God know my heart. God know my heart. Yeah, you right. He do know your heart, which means he know you. Yep. Which means you can't fake it with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and you also can't hide nothing from him, which also means. If he calls you to do something, he are he know everything about you. So ain't no point in you being down on yourself like, oh man, I can't do this, yeah. I can't do that, and you know, I ain't ready yet, and yada, 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 yada. Well, he asked you to, he he told you, like we were talking about earlier, yeah. he told you to go. He told you to go. He told you to go. He didn't tell you to go because he don't know about <laughs> such and such and such. <laughs> He know that. That's like in the Bible, him telling Moses to go, and Moses like, I can't talk. He like, oh yeah, I know that, but go anyway. He like, no, I got your brother coming to help you, crazy. So go. Man, you all in my Kool Aid. We can ready to talk about that, you know, coming up. But yeah, yeah, go, just go, go. go. I know you're a murderer. Go, go please. Go. I know go. you're a cheater. Go, go please. Yes, 
I know you was looking at that Chiba. Go. Man, where you go and get them folk? <laughs> yes. And so, and so now let me say this. I'm not saying that this is not a license exactly. for us to go out here and live wild and be crazy. No, we're going to, it's all BS. Mm -hmm. Bible study. We're going to stay in these confines in which God has outlined for us, yeah. right? But it just means don't be down on yourself because you are not perfect. Don't think that God won't call you. Don't think he won't use you. Don't think you don't have an assignment and a calling on your life because yeah. you ain't perfect. Now, never one of them people in the Bible was perfect. Yeah. And they probably was worse than you. Probably. That's the other thing, but they probably was worse than you. Because yeah, back in the day, you, they ain't had no Facebook, they ain't had no Twitter, Nikki, they ain't had no cameras. They was murderers they and didn't cheaters have, and liars. And nobody and, sending no text messages. Listen, when you got in trouble, it took a few weeks for somebody to know you did it. That's back in the Bible. So they did, and they didn't have the set of rules. They didn't have the Bible. They didn't have the guideline. And you know what they didn't have? They didn't have free will to the Holy Spirit, and they didn't have free will to Jesus either. Right. So they they were a lot. It was a lot harder back then. Yeah. We have it so much easier now. God loves us so much mm -hmm. that he How made much? it so easy mm -hmm. for us to have a relationship, an intimate, mm -hmm. sacred relationship with him, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus mm -hmm. right here, right now. Yeah. Back in Moses in them days, uh -huh. it was only one person that had God. <laughs> they had to go up in the pillar of cloud for yeah. 40 days, and he had to and wait for him to come back, back down. down and then tell me yeah, what I, right you think he said. Absolutely. He only went up by himself, and we waited for days. That's now it. you could talk to God every day, all day, every yeah. second of the day. You could call on God. You could call on Jesus. Holy Spirit could touch you every day. Mm -hmm. By yourself. Mm -hmm. That's how much God loves us, no matter how raggedy we are. And even the ones who don't love him, he still, still loves love them. He's waiting on you. Waiting on you. Waiting on you. Waiting on you. He said, if I'm knocking, all you got to do is open the door. And people don't understand that. All you got to do is say, God, come on. That's it. Let's go. That's it. I invite you in, however you see this fit. But for our generation, we don't feel like we can say that. Because we ain't been told that he'll take us just like Ooh. this. You know I saying? read this scripture in the Bible this Let's morning. Can I read it? Or do you if you can get it real quick. Yeah, I got it real quick. Okay, keep talking. Real quick. Keep talking. Keep talking. We, we, we have a hard time believing that or doing that because we have not been told that he going to take us the way we are. We don't. We, we ain't. We haven't realized that we can say, God, like, come on in, like, right now. Like, yeah. Come on in. And, and we can do and we can do that. We have access. But we gotta know we can do it. Right. We gotta know we can we do it. We have access. We have access. We have the most intimate, secret, sacred mm -hmm. access. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, like I'm addicted to God. Mm -hmm. And you could be addicted to a lot of things in this world, but I'm addicted to God. Like, mm -hmm. I have to have him. Mm -hmm. I got to wake up. I got to touch him first. I got to talk to him first. I got to talk to him last because this world is so loud. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to just sit and just be, then this world will overtake you. And you got to let God's voice be the reigning voice, be the loudest voice in your life. I agree. And so for that, I, it's like... People be like, oh, yeah, I'm binge watching a show or da 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 da. Mm -hmm. No, I binge watch God. I get on this. <laughs> I get on him. I be like, all right, God, I ain't heard from you today. Like, you ain't uh -huh. saying nothing. I just wanted to know what lipstick was I wearing today, oh, Jesus? Y'all talk like that. Oh, my God. People be like, Nikki, you look good. The Holy Spirit put my outfit together. I don't do none of this by myself. Bishop said uh -huh. this years ago. God laid that out for oh you. Oh, my God, did he? Jesus, the Holy Spirit picked this jacket out. I found out. this in Plato's closet. Uh -huh. How did it fall out of the Listen, closet? Listen, let me tell you something. You just opened the closet and it was... No, play those closets. I went to the store. Uh -huh. So years ago, I don't know how long it was, Bishop was talking about how the Holy Spirit sometimes need to get y'all dressed because they ain't wearing da-da-da-da-da uh -huh. uh -huh. and da-da-da. And he was like, but some people feel like they don't need that. They feel like mm -hmm. they're too big. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I, I don't think I'm too big. Mm -hmm. Well, God, what you what mm -hmm. you talking? Let's mm -hmm. get dressed. Mm -hmm. Ever since I've been asking the Holy Spirit to get me dressed, mm -hmm. these outfits, I'd be like, Holy Spirit. I'd be looking at me, I'd be like, Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. He'd be like, throw that jacket on. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> I walked to I walked into Plato's closet and I was just looking. Holy Spirit said, "Look." I said, "There you go." Jacket. He said, "Look at the tag." I said, twelve dollars." He said, "Go buy it." I said, "Thank you kindly." See, that's how it go. Read your scripture on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna close out on your scripture. Yes. Okay. Read your scripture. So this is one of the ones I was reading. It's it's First Corinthians mm -hmm. ten thirty one to thirty three in the Message Bible. It says, "So eat your meals heartily, not worrying about what others say about you. You're eating at God's glory. After all, not to please them." 
As a matter of fact, do everything that way, hardly and freely to God's glory. At the same time, don't be callous in your exercise of freedom, Mm. thoughtlessly stepping on the toes of those who aren't as free as you are. I try my best to be considerate of everyone's feelings in all these matters. I hope you will be too. Mm -hmm. That's the Bible. Like, so God is saying, his word says, I'm giving you free range to live happy, to live healthy. But... Do not do it. Don't don't get crazy. Right, absolutely. And don't absolutely. let what you're doing taint somebody else because they might not be there. Mm-hmm. It's just saying having self-control, mm-hmm. have self-discipline for whatever you do yeah. and that my residue doesn't get on you. That's good. That's good. That's good. Listen, I hope y'all enjoy, I guess, Nikki Peacock. Thanks for hanging with Thank us. Thank you. I had a great time. Me too. Me too. I really had a Me good too. time. We're going to have to do it again. Yeah. Listen, this is your boy LJ. Appreciate y'all hanging out and kicking it with us all the time, man, right here with all BS. We see y'all soon, man. I'm gone.